Hollywood has always been gay. In this video series, we look at gay stars or moments that either defined or were hidden from history. Welcome to the Gay Hollywood Files. In this week's video, we're heading back almost a hundred years to the very start of movie history. William Dixon was a British inventor who is credited with inventing an early motion picture camera. He was hired by Thomas Edison in 1883 and started working on a device able to capture moving pictures. The device he invented was called a kinetoscope and was designed for films to be viewed by one person at a time, viewing the film through a peephole viewer window. In an attempt to link sound with pictures, Dixon made a film with the kinetoscope and a kinetophone. The Dixon experimental sound film was filmed somewhere between 1894 and 1895. It is considered to be the first motion picture in history to display a gay couple. Though the word gay wasn't associated with homosexuality at the time of the film's release, it shocked viewers with its subversion of conventional male behavior. Though no record exists that Dixon was gay, one can only wonder why he chose two men to dance with each other in the first motion picture ever. With no surviving records, the identity of the two men remain open for debate. Some say they were employees of Edison's, but no definitive proof exists on whether they were gay or not. In 2003, the film was added to the National Film Registry of the Library of Congress, being deemed culturally, historically, or of significance, and recommended for preservation. Ramon Novaro began his career in silent films in 1917 and eventually became a leading man and one of the top box office attractions of the 1920s and early 1930s. He is considered to be the first Latin American actor to have a successful acting career in Hollywood. Novaro was brought up Catholic and struggled with his homosexuality because of his religious family. When he was 14 years old, Novaro and his parents, as well as his 12 siblings, moved to Los Angeles to escape the Mexican Revolution. Novaro began his film career in 1917, playing small parts, while supplementing his income by working as a singing waiter and as a dancer in reviews. It took about five years before he began to play more prominent roles. His role in 1923's Scaramouche brought him his first major success. The film was financially successful in the United States and broke box office records in Paris and London. The film's success ensured that Novaro was the name on the lips of everyone in Hollywood as a formidable rival for Rudolf Valentino, who was the reigning leading man at the time. Women swooned over the new actor, but he had a secret. Novaro had been in a romantic relationship with an usher, Harry Parch, who would eventually become a successful composer. Novaro broke it off with Parch when his career took off. Novaro's new publicist, Hollywood journalist Herbert Howe, advised him to keep his homosexuality a secret for the sake of his career. Novaro and Howe eventually became lovers and remained in a relationship for the remainder of the 1920s. Novaro's biggest success came in 1925's Ben-Hur. The film was an international success and Novaro's revealing outfits stole the show. In 1997, Ben-Hur was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. We're just glad Novaro's most swoon-worthy work is being preserved for future generations. Novaro had a successful acting career for three decades, but kept his sexuality a secret. On October 30, 1968, Acting legend Ramon Novaro was murdered by brothers Paul and Tom Ferguson. According to the death certificate, Novaro died as a result of asphyxiation, having choked to death on his own blood after being beaten by the two brothers. The two were sentenced to long prison terms, but released on parole less than 10 years later. Paul Ferguson finally assumed blame for the murder. He died in 2018 while serving out a 60-year sentence for rape in Missouri. The motive for the murder is presumed to be that the two brothers were invited over to the actor's house for intercourse. Novaro is buried in the Calvary Cemetery in California. Before we continue, we publish videos every Saturday and Sunday. So remember to click like and subscribe. 
Also, if you enable notifications you'll be the first to know whenever we post new videos. We also love hearing from you, so please leave a comment. Now back to the video. The Pansy Craze was an LGBTQ movement from 1930 until 1933, during which drag queens, known as pansy performers at the time, experienced a surge in underground popularity. Almost like what RuPaul's Drag Race did for drag queens today. Starting in the 1920s, cabarets and speakeasy bars had female impersonators headlining performances to great success. Performer Jean Mallon is considered the queen of the pansy craze. When he started out, he didn't dress up as a woman, but rather a flamboyant homosexual man in a tuxedo. The pansy craze broadened the acceptable behavior of men during the three years of its popularity until the prohibition caused bars to close and drove these performers underground and out of the spotlight. Performers who were popular during this time included Ray Bourbon, who was known for outrageous risque monologues on stage, and Carol Norman, a young upcoming performer who was known for wearing glamorous gowns, mostly made by his mother, with whom he traveled. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to click like and subscribe. Also, check out some of the other videos on this channel.